Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, Gab Bosa, and we're back with another video. Ugh. Cowboy Nation, man, you guys went out in one of the worst ways I think I've ever seen in sports, bro. I think this is one of the, I'm not willing to say all-time, all-time upsets, but it's pretty up there. I'm not even a Dallas Cowboy fan, and I kind of dismissed the Green Bay Packers. And I don't think anybody besides Green Bay Packer fans thought they were going to win that game. And, hey, listen, man, any given Sunday, teams lose. There has to be a loser, right? It's just how y'all lost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being the second seed in the East, basically playing around the league like you guys had a relatively decent schedule it wasn't the most difficult but you guys kind you guys won 12 games again you know what i mean this isn't like one good season to not even make it to the second round and to go out in the wild card like that you know to the seventh seed is pretty hard and pretty demoralizing if you're a cowboy fan which i'm not of course but uh we have the dallas cowboys went out sad we're gonna get into it you guys got a lot of reevaluating to do you guys got a lot of reevaluating to do you might you guys might get rid of mike mccarthy there's question marks about what you guys are gonna do with dak i don't think y'all need to do anything with dak to be honest i really don't know what you need to do because you can't go in a rebuild right you know what i mean so you guys are primed for a championship but you guys got to figure out why you can't get there and I'm not going to be one of those haters that go, you know, whatever can go wrong will go wrong or it's because you guys are the Dallas Cowboys. No, like there's a reason why you're not making it to the Super Bowl. And I don't know. That's not my job to figure it out. Get into the game. Uh, yeah, we got beat. There's no other which way to, around it. No way to sugarcoat it. I sucked tonight. No, that was that was it. As, as I hey, said, yo. I going a little bit late, but but none of that mattered at that point. They used to take stock in what they think of my a little bit late you got it going when it was over <laughs> a little bit late it's like 27 is zip Mike mccarthy and then what other options would be available every time we made a video on this youtube channel about the dallas cowboys i've consistently shown you this meme of the dallas cowboys cycle and that's to remind you guys each and every season starts to beat up bad teams fans get delusional we them boys this is our year choking the playoffs that this is hilarious honestly that's honestly like the cycle of being a dallas cowboy fan or the dallas cowboys in general bro you know what i mean like you always see the narrative like who did they beat didn't beat anybody good and then yo i ain't gonna front this is pretty accurate every year no matter how great it looks the cycle always repeats the top comment on that meme was the fact that you guys wanted to see my raw unfiltered emotional reaction immediately but you guys have already seen that so many times before and to be honest this video needed to be way more dense than that so before we get to the content make sure you drop like subscribe and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow this is my third straight day in a row i'm like four hours of sleep now that we get all that out of the way freak It wasn't just me, it was everyone that followed these pics on my Instagram story. And the best feeling is the amount of people that made money as a result of this. I mean, BAM! Come on, bro. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, bro. Seed in the NFC, but they were the second seed in the NFC. When you pair that with the fact that they were undefeated at home this past season and that they had a reputation of not performing well on the road, then it's not necessarily beyond the realm of possibility to expect this team to have a decent chance of making it to the NFC Championship. But at the same time, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, so I have PTSD. Like this moment. Balls. In the air, the way that Des Bryant. Has. It was a catch! Or more recently, this moment. Pass is incomplete, out of bounds. Now they say complete. And I understand the Green Bay Packers had a brand new quarterback, which we're going to do a whole video on him this week because he deserves it. But yeah, got to. Part, I felt optimistic. C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott seem to have finally been getting in a groove. Dan Quinn's defense has been awesome, at least against the pass. And the Cowboys were even favored in this particular matchup. No seven seed in the history of the NFL has ever beaten a two seed in the first round. I mean, Cowboy fans were really starting to get behind Dak. Hold on, that that's true? I thought it's at least happened at least once. Has the number one number 17 ever been uh, the cowboys look i thought that happened at least once i mean cowboy fans were really starting to get behind dak prescott you were motivated you remember what he said last week after they were crowned division champions yeah we're, we're not we're damn sure not done um man it's only the beginning for us and i'm excited for it so of course dallas cowboy fans got excited but i would like to remind you each and every year this happened each and every year we look for real in the regular 
season. Each and every year, we end our season in the most embarrassing fashion possible. Only this time, it wasn't against the San Francisco 49ers. But this time, we lost in the wild card. Going into the game, Josina Anderson said this about the Dallas Cowboys head coach. The outcome of the Cowboys and Eagles playoff games this week in the NFC East may have a lot riding on them. I'm told Philadelphia at this time is already considering some staff changes after the season, particularly on the defensive side, per league source. As for Dallas and whether a major change could still happen there, especially if the Cowboys suffered an early exit, a league source with knowledge told me today that anything can still happen. And that was said with all due respect being given to Mike McCarthy. Now, I think it's very lazy and cheap to blame Mike McCarthy solely for this horrible performance against the Green Bay Packers because it was a complete meltdown from every aspect. The Dallas Cowboys' strength was... I ain't go front. And, and I like the fact that he pointed that out because at the end of the day, like, you know, they're always going to blame the coach, right? Fire Mike McCarthy, get rid of Dak. But the players are the ones that play on the football field, bro. The players are the ones that got to want it bad enough to be able to advance. It doesn't matter how much you teach a student something. If they don't prepare and do homework and give effort, they're going to fail. You can't blame it on the teacher, right? We don't do that in schools, but in sports, it always seems to happen to be the coach's problem whenever a team loses. Dallas sucked against the Packers, bro. Y'all couldn't do... Y'all honestly couldn't have done anything right. It was like everyone was a shell of themselves, from C.D. Lamb to Dak Prescott to Micah Parsons to the cornerback, secondary, the safeties. Even the kicker, who was like one of the best kickers of the season, missed a point after. So it was a complete, total meltdown. It's just we have to blame one person for it. And then, you know, Jerry Jones ain't going to take the blame. So it's everybody else's fault. It's never Jerry Jones. As well. Dan Quinn, for some reason, decided to run his own defense, despite man defense being the Dallas Cowboys' strong suit the entire season. And could someone please tell me what the actual f was this from Stephon Gilmore? I mean, honestly, what is this from Stephon Gilmore? You can't tell me that this was some sort of zone coverage because he's trying to follow like Romeo man. Dobbs here. It seemed like the Cowboys were just outplayed, outcoached, outmatched from every single standpoint, despite this team being one of the most talented teams that we've seen in recent memory i mean micah parsons got a holding call for crying out loud it got so bad that dallas cowboy fans left when the packers were up 41 to 16 and this damn of jerry jones is all you really need to know about what the future is going to look like for the dallas cowboys we're going to get to that in just a second before we talk about that i am at a loss for words a lot of fans wonder why i don't buy into the hype of the dallas cowboys and no matter what happens i usually yeah i'm do done a disclaimer that this team has a history of choking and embarrassing its fans and embarrassing themselves yeah i want to buy yeah. into the hype i think cd lamb is a top five wide receiver in the nfl i think Dak facts Scott played like a top five qb in the nfl this past facts I think the run game was a little weak but the offensive line was facts the pass rush was incredible and we have arguably the best defensive player in the nfl in micah parsons the versatility of him and the impact he has on the game is something like we've never seen before yeah our defensive backs went down down. Javon Diggs got injured. Stephon Gilmore gave us great games despite that one clip I showed you. We were good from each and every position except for the linebackers. And to see the season end like this was heartbreaking to say the least because I can't look at this team and tell you definitively what the weakness is. And I think that's the part that that's what I'm saying. Because Dan Quinn was incredible as a defensive coordinator up until this past game. And now the Cowboys are going into the offseason with a lot of questions. The first is which free agents are they looking to retain? They're key free agents this offseason are Tony Pollard, Tyron Smith, Stephon Gilmore, Tyler Biotic, Dorrance Armstrong, J. Ron Kirst, Jordan Lewis, Jonathan Hankins, Neville Gallimore, Dante Fowler, Chuma Ido. Half these guys, I don't know. I'll leave it to the fan base to tell me about some of these um, O-lines and DTs. I'll say one thing. Uh, Tony Pollard, I'd franchise tag him again. Uh, even though running backs are replaceable, uh, I don't think Tony Pollard was necessarily special, but you need a running back, right? Uh, do you guys get rid of him for somebody else? Maybe, maybe not. But it's kind of like what I was alluding to early in the video. I don't know what you kind of do. This team is like primed to win. And my early predictions were that, that the Cowboys were probably going to lose to the 49ers in the NFC title game. Now, if that was the case, right, let's just say dallas gets past the green bay packers then they get past the lions and now we're one game away from the super bowl and you guys lose to the 49ers for third consecutive year i think the coach is out of here i think you guys get rid of mike mccarthy but what do you really do to improve that roster who do y'all really need i think y'all i think y'all low-key kind of loaded 
low key star receiver star defensive end maybe you could adjust getting a linebacker but nah this is just heartbreaking <laughs> if you're a cowboy fan no nah, i'm Noah Igbenagin and Rico Dowdle. They have the number one offense in football. Dak playing the best football of his career. A top five defense, a pretty good special teams, and one of the better special team coaches in the NFL. And they still choked. And this is where I believe we're going to get a little divisive on how this offseason is going to look. Because Mike McCarthy has done a great job in relief for Jason Garrett. But honestly, the Mike McCarthy era has been like Jason Facts. Garrett plus. In the sense that we'll make it to the playoffs and then we'll choke in the playoffs. Whereas in years past, Jason Garrett would just show a complete inability to make any adjustments at all whatsoever, and we would make it to the playoffs and also choke in the playoffs as well. Although there were a lot more eight and eight seasons in the latter part of the Jason Garrett era. So there are two ways this off season can go, and I'm just saying this with as clear of a head as humanly possible. The first direction is Jerry Jones gets angry, fires Mike McCarthy, and elevates Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn currently has a bunch of interviews scheduled with four NFL teams for his head coaching job one being the carolina panthers the other being the tennessee titans the washington commanders and the la chargers so do i think any of those jobs could potentially poach him i think either the chargers or commanders are a much more damn i might lose situation dan quinn now, but i think the carolina panthers or the tennessee titans could be a potential downgrade but i don't necessarily know if they're a huge threat for him to leave there could definitely be the chance that he's just doing this just to boost his value so he could get a bigger contract to stay in dallas with that being said the one thing that I'm sure I was about to say is what the fate of Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott is going to be to have Jair Alexander who by the way had an incredible game even though some people are saying that this was a penalty I personally didn't think this was a penalty on Jair Alexander nah this wasn't a flag was, play football bro play football bro that, that's clamps can't call for flags in this particular instance it's playoff football that's a signature Jair Alexander play but to have him say this about Dak Prescott is crazy there's a, there's a few quarterbacks who've thrown me multiple picks in my career and Dak is now one of them so he's along my top QBs so with that being said what do I think the Cowboys oh! about their quarterback situation Dak Prescott yikes this is by the way why the Dallas Cowboys were performing so well this past year Dak Prescott was on an undervalued contract so they were Oh, damn, like that boy shot here. Yeah, don't hold no so punches. On how much Dak Prescott is going to sign for. But the question is, should the Cowboys re-sign Dak Prescott? Absolutely, the Cowboys should sign Dak. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Better QBs in the NFL than Dak. And he's really showed me that he could get it done. I'm a huge believer in Dak Prescott. I don't know if it's the fact that I love his story and I have respect for the resilience that he's went through in his personal life with his mom and his brother. But he's also shown me the ability to make the right plays and make the right reads in specific situations and i think dak prescott for the most part is safe it would look ridiculous to move on from him following the season that'd be yeah 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 yeah, yeah. come on can't do that with a 70 percent completion percentage. can't do that we're not come on bro 36 touchdowns and nine interceptions for anybody that's saying that dak prescott needs to be traded or released or cut yeah yeah like come on man get out your feelings like look at these stats bro 4,000 passing yards, 36 touchdowns, nine picks. That's like Lamar's MVP season. You know what I mean? Dak ain't going nowhere. You guys can't afford to move on from Dak. Because wh what, what's better out there? Now, I know the loss to the Green Bay was devastating, but what's, what's out there? Come on, bro. You just muted yourself? You gonna... I think he was an all-pro and a pro bowler this past year. You can't move on from a player like that. But I don't think he should reset the market at the quarterback position. And that's not as like a punishment, but if we want to contend, Dak needs to at least come in at like number four or number five if we want any chance at contention. And I think it'd be inappropriate to... And I think he know that too. ...quarterback in the NFL once again. The thing that I think is most likely to change, however, is the Cowboys coaching situation. And you're seeing so many memes about this, like Bill Belichick watching this game and then even tony pauline said this about bill belichick a few days ago how jerry jones could look to hire bill belichick depending on how bro if my coach goes to dallas man cowboys to produce in the 
playoffs, something that they haven't done in a while. The thing is, the Cowboys haven't shat the bed this badly since they got the first round bye in 2007 and lost to the New York Giants after Tony Romo went to Cabo with Jessica Simpson. And at the same time, it's a really good offseason to be in the market for a head coach. I mean, there are absolute superstars available for hire at the head coaching position. Front. Individuals like Jim Harbaugh, Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, Brandon Staley. Okay, maybe not Brandon Staley. You have young studs like Ben Johnson available. And historically, Jerry Jones likes those big splashy hires. I've always said that the Cowboys were a competent head coach away from winning Super Bowls. And I think the pairing of Bill Belichick on the Dallas Cowboys is not a matter of if, rather it's a matter of when. Now, you could make the counter argument that Jerry Jones loves his yes men. And Mike McCarthy and Jason That's so cringe. Yes and he typically opts for that type of head coach. But Jason Garrett, yes man. Jones hired Bill Parcells before. And this is the big splashy hire that Jerry Jones typically looks to make a blue chip head coach is available you already have your roster constructed in my opinion you just need the right individual to call plays for this roster there's no way you hire bill belichick and your team gets worse especially if he's only going to be a head coach but that's where the problem lies will bill belichick be okay with only being a head coach and not also being involved in roster construction i think it's a match made in heaven because bill belichick would be able to beat don Shula's record even quicker with a roster like the dallas cowboys and i do you think the Dallas Cowboys can win a Super Bowl with a head coach like Bill Belichick? It would also really help his legacy as well. Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay and was able to win a Super Bowl over there. Oh, it's Bill starting Belichick to sound really compelling. Wins a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott, who was struggling to win a Super Bowl before Bill Belichick came along. I think this is something we're going to find out within the next couple of days. I thought it would have been as soon as today, but I was wrong, and I wanted to give you guys this reaction immediately. At the end of the day, I'm heartbroken as a Dallas Cowboy fan. The reason I'm not even more heartbroken than I am now is because, dude, I'm used to it. It happens each and every single <laughs> year. That's not going to stop me from acting like a delusional cowboy fan next season saying, this year's our year. Only for me to show up one year later and give you another video like this. Because at the end of the day, that's the Dallas Cowboys cycle. That's the curse that my father put on me when he became a Dallas Cowboy fan. Only he got to enjoy the triplets era and I get to enjoy whatever the f*** this is. <laughs> Wide open. <laughs> Sub, yo, oh my god, bro. I'm not trying to play another video, bro. Damn, messing up my my my, my outro. Shit. All right, whatever. Um, yo, listen, man, it's it's really compelling, yo. If Jerry Jones could put his ego to the side, and and Bill Belichick is willing to put his ego to the side, it's just too much ego in one building, bro. You got the goat head coach in in a, on america's team now would that make the headlines would that shake the room up absolutely first of all mike mccarthy's firing will kind of sh shake the room up but a lot of people won't be surprised but if it's to hire bill belichick then my goodness this is like kd to the warriors bro like you got the goat head coach uh the defensive genius in bill belichick um on america's team with those weapons now yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to do something about the offensive play calling. Bill hasn't been the greatest when it comes to that realm. But defense, uh, the mindset, the discipline, the players he's gonna be able to motivate and get in the right positions. Oh my gosh, it's really compelling, bro. Oh man. Y'all let me know in the comment section. Do you guys want Bill Belichick coaching your Dallas Cowboys in the next year in the future years to come? Y'all let me know. But this is the winter opportunities right now, bro. We got a lot of great coaches available. I don't see Jerry Jones ignoring Mike Vrabel, Harbar, Belichick to keep Mike McCarthy. I just don't see it. Like, this is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity, um, and winning is now, right? Like, you don't want to go first-round exit and then bring back the same crew. Like, nah. Not with these guys available. But anyways, y'all let me know, man. Appreciate you guys for hollering at me. Hit the like and subscribe button for more content. We're going to continue to keep continue to do, do, do what we've been doing, man. Like, this is what I do, man. I'm going to holler at you guys next video. Road to 20K humbly. Eagles, y'all next. I'm not letting y'all off the hook.